Hi there, it's Don Steele. I'm going to make a video about what I think about life. I'm 81 years old, so I know a lot about what life is, what it isn't. And I thought I'd share that with you. I would say the first thing that came to mind is doctors are highly overrated, highly overrated. PhDs and MDs. <laughs> I've learned that over 81 years. My father was a county dentist in a small county in Western Pennsylvania. Uh, there was no hospital and people would die from broken legs and internal bleeding because the hospital was 25 miles away. There was one doctor in the county and he and my dad got together, raised some money by telling all the businessmen what they were going to do. And they started their own hospital with a dentist and a doctor. And they got another doctor moved into the county and he joined the hospital too. So they had two MDs and one DDS. My dad did all full extractions in the hospital because you can go into shock with a full extraction in the hospital. They have much better possibilities of keeping you alive if you do go into shock. And in the small county I grew up in, everybody wanted all their teeth taken out. <laughs> their teeth were too much trouble. So they would go for dentures when they were 30 years old, full dentures, top and bottom. Because they didn't know how to take care of their teeth and they were rotten and hurting them all their, all their lives. There are some good doctors. Let's see, Dr. Myers, the doctor that started the hospital with my dad, was a great person and a great doctor. Uh, he cured me of... Uh, appendicitis. He was drunk when he <laughs> took my appendix out. <laughs> well, I was sobering up anyway. It was three in the morning. But he was a good doctor. And uh, my dad was a great dentist. He did perfect dental work all the time on everybody. And was a perfectionist about dentistry. And he uh, told me on his deathbed that he was really sad that he spent so many years practicing preventive dentistry, preaching to these people in Appalachia to take care of their teeth, but they never listened. And he said, they always come to me when it hurts. <laughs> they don't come until it hurts. Later on in my therapy life, I learned that people don't come to therapy until it hurts bad enough. And I have a friend who was a medical doctor, another good doctor, who said, uh, I don't know why people want to stay sick. I tell them everything to do and they don't do it. They don't come here until it's too late, usually. But who knows why people are the way they are? I don't. After 81 years, I don't know why people are, are so fucked up like that. I know that giving your child things instead of making them work for it is absolutely the wrong thing to do. So make your child earn his way, starting at day one. There's consequences for working hard, you get a reward, money, you don't have to go to school, <laughs> whatever is important to the kid. Reward them for earning their own way. Adam Kroll is a, has a podcast and he talks about his kids don't have any idea what money is. To them, it's just they wave their payphone over the pizza guy's delivery and uh, they get the pizza. <laughs> they don't have any idea how the money got in the bank. They didn't earn it. He just keeps giving it to him and he complains about it. Well, it's his fault, for Christ's sake. You've got to be the man. You're the dad. Be in charge. Education is, uh, I knew innately what a good education was. So I took classes that I liked and I was interested in, the ones I could. At Penn State, the first two years, you have to take all the ones they give you and you get only two electives or three electives out of two years. So I had a lot of classes that I wasn't interested in. I did learn a lot about basic stuff because I was a liberal arts major. My first declared major was uh, labor management relations as the only major that did not require algebra. <laughs> That's how I picked it out of the catalog. But you had to fill in the form, fill in the form. So I had to put something in there. So I put in labor management relations. I did take one time in motion study class. It was the only thing I could take as a freshman or sophomore. My father insisted that I learn Latin in high school. We had Latin as the only language besides English. I didn't like it. It was a pain in the ass memorizing all that stuff. But what it did was increase my vocabulary about 
well, I want to guess 500 times beyond what it would have been without Latin. All the stems, all the base words that are in English, all the Romance languages and English have a lot of Latin words in them. And so you may not have ever seen the word before, but if you, if you know the base word in Latin, you can probably figure out what it means. So that helped me a lot in reading and understanding things. The other thing that happened was uh, my grandmother and my parents would not tell me what a word means. They made me look it up in the dictionary. And I can remember being nine years old saying to my grandma, how can I look it up if I don't know how, what it means? She said, you'll figure out a way, get the dictionary and look it up, son. So I'd struggle guessing how it was spelled and I'd finally find it. And that's right, make the kid earn his way. Even he has to earn what he learns. That was all good for me. I think the most important invention, even better than birth control is an automobile. Okay, I think birth control pills are the number one invention in the history of the world. But automobiles are right up there, man. They change the world and they'll change your child's world. Get them involved in cars as soon as you can. How to change a flat tire, how to put gas in it, how to check the oil, where to put the water, how not to burn yourself when you check the radiator, to teach them all the basic stuff. If you don't know that, <laughs> You weren't raised by the parents that I, kinds of parents that I was raised by. You learn yourself. Don't let your kid be out there with some simple problem he can fix himself with a little bit of knowledge. But what advice would I give my 20 year old self? Well, it's going to be a long, bumpy road, and that's normal. Life is not smooth. Children grow up thinking life's supposed to be one big, long, smooth thing and nothing goes wrong. But life is just a series of obstacles that you have to overcome. Somebody, nobody ever told me that. I had to wait till I got into therapy before Nathaniel Brandon said that to us. It's nothing but a series of obstacles. One obstacle after the other until you die. And it's how you overcome the obstacles that determines your character. So don't be afraid to have your child have obstacles. And let them overcome them by themselves. Do the best you can with what you've got where you are. Teddy Roosevelt. And I went to Hawaii on vacation in uh, 1978. And I wish I would have stayed there. There's another tip. When you find some place you really like, stay there. Don't go back home. <laughs> I mean, it was paradise. It was everything I wanted in life. And I didn't understand I should have stayed there. Got on the plane and went home. My life would be entirely different if I would have stayed there. I was never any other place that I thought was that wonderful. Even half that wonderful. You should get out of the United States, travel around the world, and see how fucked up the rest of the world is compared to America. That was a good thing about the Army. I went in the Army, drafted into the Army, and Germany was the second best country in the world except for Canada. And this is 1964. We were on alert. That means pretending the Russians are coming. Driving our a uh, convoy of trucks through the German countryside. And I was in the back of a deuce and a half. A deuce and a half is a two and a half ton truck. And that's the way you see Europe when you're in the army from the back of a deuce and a half. And there were men plowing the field, but the animal pulling the plow was his wife. This is 1964. I saw it many times. That's how poor Germany was in 1964, the second best country in the world. So you think the United States is fucked. <laughs> Go see some other countries. I went to Saudi Arabia in 1984, and it is really the worst place on the planet. The Middle East, uh, there's nothing there. Sand as far as you can see, hot, stupid people, uneducated. They marry their cousins, so their IQs are all dumbed down to 83 average among the Muslims. The Muslim world, 83 average IQ because of all the inbreeding with first cousins. And besides that, they live in the 11th century with their religion. They don't know how to do anything. Really a shithole. Of course, I've never been to Haiti. <laughs> Trump called a shithole, which it is, and I've never been there. But Travel around the world, see what you can see, learn what you can about other people. Germans in general were the German civilians were nice to Americans, civil and polite. They didn't want us to be there any more than we would want Germans 
on bases in the United States. They're a strange country. They had, I think, 22 days off a year. Uh, my first wife, Janet, and I would walk from our apartment downtown up to the army base. We used to take this one shortcut through an alley and up another alley, and they were making a new water main there. And it took them three months to uh, dig a ditch, maybe 15 feet long, the width of the alley, and six feet deep, and lay a pipe across there <laughs> because they had so many days off. And the other thing was they'd get drunk at lunch. They bring beer and drink and we'd go by and they'd be drinking and they'd be pretty buzzed by the time if we got there about one in the afternoon and they never got any work done in the afternoon so that's what I know about Germany now they might have been public employees that thought just occurred to me and the same thing goes on here with public employees if you're doing something you like like I worked for Northrop in 1979 80 and 81 as a uh, writer producer director of of video and movies and I loved that job and it only paid four hundred dollars a week but I'd still be there if I could if I, if I wouldn't have gotten so mad I quit I'd be so happy to get up in the morning and go to work and I would stay there until six or seven eight at night without even trying I just loved it so much but the boss was such a total idiot that I, I wanted to kill him I almost choked him one time I got so fucking mad at him so I had to quit because it was just ruining my life. Uh, the other job I've had is being a therapist in a workshop. I do my own workshops with men who don't know how to date. It's unbelievably rewarding at the end of the weekend. We come on, uh, go all day Friday, all day Saturday, and all day Sunday. And on Sunday night, I just feel like a million dollars. I feel like I've actually made a dent in the world. I've helped some men go on in their lives with a girlfriend when they never could do anything about it before. They didn't know what to do. They didn't know how to do it. But giving them the skills and the tools they needed to get a girlfriend was just so rewarding. I can't even explain what it felt like. It just felt like I was doing good and I enjoyed it all at the same time, but I was helping people. And I would say, based on my personality, that's at the bottom of the fucking chart. <laughs> okay. I just, people, generally, I don't like people. They're, they're mostly just a pain in the ass. They're stupid. They're ignorant, packed full of horseshit from Christianity and socialism and communism, all sorts of stupid shit. I would say, Ed Mayer told me one time, Ed Mayer's the guy devoted to, dedicated the book office politics to. He's the best human being I ever met as far as being smart, witty, funny, good companion, good friend, knew everything, just a hell of a guy. He told me that you're only going to meet a few people in the world that you really like, and he was one of them. Cigarettes. Dumbest fucking thing I ever did. Cigarettes. Ugh. But boy, that, those fucking cigarettes are the most addictive thing on the planet. God, that was horrible quitting. I quit because my mother had emphysema and my dad had already died of lung cancer and prostate cancer. They couldn't tell which one killed him, but he was full of both of them. So I realized that I either have my mother's DNA and I'm going to get emphysema, or I have my dad's DNA and I'm going to get lung cancer. That was at 50 and I quit smoking. But it was the hardest thing I've ever done in my entire fucking life. Harder than basic training. Harder than not choking my boss at Northrop. <laughs> and that was really hard. Oh, good God, that motherfucker. Incompetence. Ugh, I hate incompetence. I hate, 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 hate. Head of audiovisual because he was the man who loaded the film in the camera in 1950 something when they were doing the rocket sled testing. You've never seen that famous picture on the front of Life magazine of the guy's face. Al pulled back that from the acceleration on the rocket sled. Al Losher was the man who put the film in the camera and turned it on before the rocket slid went off. <laughs> that qualified him to explain to me where to make the cut in a video. <laughs> he didn't know anything, as most bosses don't. The best books I've ever read, one of them was called uh, The Peter Principle. And The Peter Principle is that the company keeps promoting you 
until you can't do the job they promote you into. Then they stop promoting you and keep you there. So you're now in charge of people and you don't know what the fuck you're doing. So that's why most companies are so fucked up because the incompetents are in charge. The army is the same way. You keep getting promoted until you can't do the job and then you don't get promoted anymore. In the army, the captain doesn't make major three, three times. He tries to make major and he doesn't make it. They make him a sergeant, take him out of the officer corps and put him back in the enlisted corps. That's one thing they do right. I think, I don't think there's any limit on going from three striped sergeants to four striped sergeants, but there's a lot of three striped sergeants in the army that have 15, 16 years in the army. <laughs> and they're stuck there at three stripes because they can't do the fucking job. And they're not going to get a fourth stripe, which would make them in charge of things they shouldn't be in charge of. So that's the way the world works. You're promoted to a level of incompetence and then you don't get any further promotion. So you run out running things from where you are. Egad, that's the way it works. Women, women are the greatest thing God ever put on this planet. They're the source of the greatest joy ever and the greatest sorrow ever. Take one and the other comes along with it, no matter which way you go. She'll make you happy and she'll make you miserable. And your job, as I've learned, is when it starts to get miserable, say, I don't want to do this anymore, and quit. Okay. That's the number one lesson I'd say of all time. When it's not fun anymore, stop doing it. I fucked up staying too long in my first marriage, too long in my second marriage, too long in my third marriage. That's just wasted years for her and you. When it's no fun anymore, change. 